Hi, it's about 8.40 on a Friday night. The wind's still blowing pretty hard. I wanted to share you, with you a couple ideas I had about greenhouses. I think it's important also to know why greenhouses are important. If you think about carbon emissions, about 17% of households' carbon emissions come from food production. If you recall the Interna Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, their assessment was that we need to reduce our carbon emissions by 7.6% per year for the next 10 years. Otherwise, we cannot meet the goal of a 1.5 degree Celsius increase in global average temperature. Food production carbon emissions can be cut in half when using a greenhouse to grow our own food. Food packaging also accounts for a significant amount of plastic waste. I think this is something that we need to consider. Only 14% of all plastic consumed is recycled, and 40% of discarded plastic is from single-use packaging. This contributes to the 18 billion pounds of plastic that ends up in the world's oceans each year. Plastic is environmentally persistent. It breaks down into smaller pieces but it's very difficult to decompose into a natural environment. Growing crops in a personal greenhouse eliminates the need for plastic packaging waste. It's anticipated that a lasting vaccine is not going to be forthcoming because antibodies quickly leave the body once you've had COVID-19, which means we're gonna be in a new world moving forward. Roughly one-third of Americans presently can't even pay rent due to loss of income. Because of that, landlords cannot pay their banks. And banks can't issue loans. And farmers can't receive money to plant. This means inevitably food prices are going to go up and food shortages are going to be a way of life. The Federal Reserve, if you've been following that privately held bank that has the right to issue money for the United States is currently printing money at a rate of 55% just out of thin air. There's no backing for it. So in other words, we're spending 55% uh, more money than we receive in actual income from our governments. I want to talk about this particular greenhouse and share some ideas on how you can build a greenhouse like this. From a sustainability purpose, it makes sense. It makes sense because you can eliminate supply chain interruptions. You can have a good, healthy quality of food intake. And thus, your medical bills can go down. Mental health has been shown to be curtailed by working in the soil, growing and processing your own food. So I came up with some ideas on how to build a structure like this very inexpensively, and I want to share those ideas. If you look at homes that are being built, those homes rely on contractors that go to lumber yards. And those lumber yards package large bundles of timber together that get shipped to the construction site. Once at the construction site, that timber is sorted. And timber with slight bends or cracks or other issues are returned to the wholesaler for full value to be given back to the contractor. At that point, the wholesaler can't do anything with it, can't sell it as retail, can't sell it back to other contractors, so has to discard it in what's called coal stacks. Coal stacks are very inexpensive. In this case, these two by threes that you see doubled up here those two by threes are ripped down from 16 foot long two by sixes that I picked up for about a dollar each. So each individual stud, eight foot stud, ran me about 25 cents. And the lateral braces, the four footers, ran about 13 cents. The paint, typically a, a lot more expensive than people realize, came from Sherwin Williams. It's premium paint. Contractors buy in bulk. But if there's any kind of discoloration that their client dislikes, it gets returned back to Sherwin-Williams. And they can't do a thing with it. 
So they throw it away or sell it as mistint paint. I purchased several gallons of latex-based paint for about $2 a gallon. Premium Sherwin-Williams latex-based paint. And I painted uh, two layers, two coats on everything. The hexagon triangles I painted white. And the pentagon triangles I painted gray. And that greatly assisted in quickly putting this together. After it was completed, I had got picked up about 70 gallons of oil-based paint from Sherwin-Williams last year for free. Alkyd and oil-based exterior paint. I cut that with gasoline to save costs and then sprayed several coats on this structure. And that produces a very good vapor barrier to preserve the wood. The reinforcing metal you see that is also painted, that came from a DOE auction lot and I paid about four cents a linear foot for it, including the screws you see that attach it. The insulation is premium. Polyisocyanurate. It's the best insulation you can get. Typically it's on the order of about 80 cents a board foot. I purchased that for 7 cents a board foot by using factory seconds from a dealer about two and a half hours drive from where I'm located. The aluminum foil is heavy duty commercial grade. I picked it up for about $25 from Sam's Club. And I glued it on with what's called fiber reinforced glue that cost about $60 from Home Depot. Climate change is predicted to increase the temperatures of certain regions in the summer and potentially decrease precipitation. In our area, it's predicted it'll increase the precipitation. But the increased temperature in the summertime will cause an earlier spring runoff from the mountains that we depend on for our irrigation, which means there'll be less, less irrigatable land in this region of central Idaho. So water recycling is going to be important, and I came up with some interesting solutions for water recycling. I have a primary and a secondary water recycling system. And you see all the water I spilt on the ground. I just watered it. Water is pretty quick. I depended on flood irrigation. Flood irrigation allows uh, minimal pressure and high flow to flood an area. Now there's benefits to that because there's very little power consumption. There's a lot of power consumption when you pressurize water to a high enough pressure you can spray. And by avoiding that, you can save a lot of energy costs, which means you can use off-grid solar panel to provide your electrical energy. And that's what I do here. I have a solar powered pump. Underneath the gravel, about a foot under, I have silage tarps. Silage tarps are those large white polyethylene plastic sheeting used to hold corn silage that are fed to dairy cows. Silage tarps are discarded when they're finished. They're usually hauled to the landfill, frequently they're just burned by local farmers. So it's a win-win for you to go in and pick them up. They are free. The farmer that uh, I got mine from was happy to have me come and haul them away so he didn't have to deal with them. So I have about three layers underneath this and the ground tapers to the middle where I built a cistern. It's a conical shaped, it's a frustum I guess would be the official term, it's a conical shaped um, well casing tank, I guess it's a tank, and it goes down about eight feet, and that captures water. So those silage tarps bring the water to this grow bed, underneath this grow bed about 18 inches, and then they seep through holes that I placed at strategic locations. Now you see a pipe there running water. That pipe is a secondary, actually a primary water uh, capture system. That four inch sewer line runs underneath the gravel but on top of the silage tarps and circumscribes all of the grow beds. So it's underneath the grow beds, each one. And I have holes drilled at the top of that sewer line and then recycled free carpet on top of the 79 cent per foot four inch sewer line that I purchased from Lowe's. 
The carpet acts as a filter, which keeps the sewer line from getting clogged up and allows clean water to flow into the cistern where I'll have catfish and bass to do aquaponics. This whole system will allow me to use 12 volt solar panels to recycle this water and the cistern will act as a heat sink in the summer and heat source in the winter. The grow beds were made fairly inexpensively using a 10 to 1 ratio of earth to Portland cement. And then stucco was made in a similar ratio with gravelous earth to Portland cement and was spread over portions of the grow beds as well as the cinder blocks, which once again I received for free. So all in all, my goal here is to have year-round growth in a USDA specified 4A climate. The 21 foot high ceiling allows me to rely on the stack effect where hot air is buoyant and is lighter or less dense than the cooler air and it can flow out through the top. The vent at the top is run by two cylinders filled with beeswax that automatically react to the temperature changes to cause the hatch to open. So no electricity is necessary to cool this structure. No forced ventilation, just strictly relying on the stack effect. So the temperature doesn't exceed about 110 degrees even in the highest temperatures in the summer. The biggest stride that I can recommend here is glazing. It's extremely expensive. I performed some experiments over two winters in an experimental greenhouse that I built to test glazing. And I tested glass, I tested polyethylene film, I tested clear polyvinyl chloride, I tested corrugated polycarbonate, and I tested multi-layer polycarbonate. Multi-layer polycarbonate is the most resilient and um, thermally effective glazing. It diffuses the light, so you can grow even in shadowed locations. Those areas over there have received no sunlight for the last month or so, but still are able to produce just fine. In the winter time, the angle uh, of inclination for the sun is 21.5 degrees. That's why I set it up like this. So come during the solar uh, or the, the uh, the winter equinox, I can have direct sunlight over in that area. The solution to expensive glazing, normally polycarbonate glazing, multi-layers on the order of $3 a square foot, very expensive, uh, was to enter into an agreement with a company, polyvalley.com, and to create a cooperative of like-minded people and import a cargo container, an entire cargo container of polycarbonate panels and then share those, distribute those. And I have an account set up with that company. Evan Wu is the owner and CEO, an excellent um, person to deal with. I recommend contacting them. Happy to give you some free advice. Uh, well, you're welcome to use my, my name with him. I have a pretty good deal set up with him. Anyway, some good ideas. Uh, I think uh, we're going into some very unusual times ahead of us, so it might be a very, very good time to build some inexpensive greenhouses. Good luck.